Hi everybody, it's ATX Mom. Today I'm going to talk to you about making your own baby food. Now we will assume for the purpose of this video that your baby is old enough to be eating solids and that you've decided you want to make some homemade baby food, which is a fantastic way to save some money and to really get involved and know what is inside your baby's food. So um, before I show you two of my favorite recipes and how to make them, I'm going to give you five really quick tips that I found in making baby food. And the first tip is to make sure that you get some good equipment as you're getting started. So um, this is my Baby Cook baby food maker. This is what I use for making all of my son's baby food. Now um, this is a, somewhat of an investment um, as, as a piece of equipment, but I found it was great because it's a steamer and a blender all in one. and I didn't have to have two separate pieces of machinery. Um, now that my son's a little older and I'm not cooking baby food for him anymore, I still use the um, baby cook to use it as a blender for his smoothies um, and things like that. So it's definitely got its use. You can just as easily make homemade baby food with a steamer. Um, if you have a rice cooker or something like that, you can even use the microwave to steam. Um, don't feel like you have to go out and buy an expensive piece of equipment. You can use a blender and a food processor along with a steamer and get the same results. Um, I just found that this was really convenient for me and our lifestyle. So this is one of two, uh, two or three different baby food makers that are on the market, and I really do like this one. Um, the other thing, if you're going to be making a lot of baby food and freezing it, is to invest in some BPA-free uh, ice cube trays. And you'll see some of my ice cube trays later on in my recipes. The ice cube trays that I got actually hold about three quarters of an ounce of food. Um, almost an ounce of food and when I was first feeding my son he would take about two cubes, about two ounces of food. Um, so they're really nice and convenient. The other tip, number two for tip, is to start out slow when you're first starting out. Um, make sure you're only introducing one new food a week to your child. They recommend about four or five days in between foods just to check for allergies. Um, and make sure that you're making things in small batches. And I will share with you, um, this is the notebook that I kept when I was making baby food for my son. And when I first started making it, I went hog wild. <laughs> um, and I spent, this was September of 2011, I spent probably a, a, an entire weekend making nothing but baby food. And I made, you can see the list here, probably 13 different types of baby food. My freezer was completely filled with all of these Ziploc bags of little cubes. And while it was great that we had such a variety, there was no way that I could possibly go through this much food before it went bad. So a lot of it unfortunately went to waste. So don't make the mistake I did and kind of gung go gung-ho and make a ton of baby food. You can really start with one or two flavors. Um, they're really quick to make and you can make them on a daily basis. Um, and make sure that you're maintaining good quality standards with food safety. So you're washing your hands and um, you're keeping bacteria away and all of those things. And I'll give you some tips as I make some baby foods, but it's super important, especially when making baby foods and their young immune systems, um, that you follow all of the food safety guidelines. My third tip I will give you in making baby food is to try it and try it again. The first few times I have introduced a few um, baby food flavors to my son, he absolutely hated them, but that's really normal. They say sometimes you have to give the same food to a baby multiple times before they'll start to um, accept that flavor and kind of adapt to that flavor. So if the first time you make homemade sweet potatoes, your little one spits them out at you, that's okay. Don't give up on them. Keep trying. Um, and they may eventually like them. The number four tip I will tell you is to get creative. Um, one of the things I really love, and I'll talk about this later too, is this cookbook by Tyler Florence called Start Fresh. It's got a lot of really great ingredients um, and combinations of things that you wouldn't normally think to put together. So um, there's really great recipes for single ingredient purees, but there's also ingredients for some really interesting things. This is a spinach and banana puree. Um, this is a green bean potato and kale. There's a lot of things um, that, that really help you get creative. Um, there's also some great websites out there. My favorite website for baby food is called wholesomebabyfood.com and wholesomebabyfood.com was like my baby food bible. When I was making baby food I think I went to that site multiple times a day. Um, it's a really great resource. It gives you a ton of information, lots of great tips, and an, an, a complete abundance of recipes for different baby foods. You can even look up by ingredient. 
So you can look up, say, blueberries, and it will tell you why it's an important ingredient for your child, all of the nutrients they get, and then a list of ingredients using that particular fruit or vegetable. Really, really great site. I can't say enough good things about wholesomebabyfood.com. And then the last tip I'm going to give you is to make sure that you're buying smart. So when you're buying your ingredients for baby food, make sure you buy seasonal. Um, make sure you're following the dirty dozen when it comes to organic foods that, um, you know, spend your money on the organic foods that are kind of the worst um, with pesticides and things like that. Um, but don't waste your money on foods that are on the Clean 15. And you can Google the Dirty Dozen Organic and Clean 15 and get a list of all of those um, fruits and vegetables that are kind of the best and worst. Um, the other thing is make sure you're keeping track of what you're spending on your ingredients and how it costs compared to the jarred baby food. Um, I did a combination of homemade baby food and jarred baby food depending on what it was. So what I did is I kept in my nifty little notebook here, I'll go back to this, um, you'll see here, you know, there's a sweet potato, carrot, and parsnip baby food that I made, and I wrote down the cost um, of everything that I had and what it was equivalent to in ounces, and then I could look at whether it was a savings or deficit. So for example, sweet potato, carrot, and parsnip, it would save me 81 cents over buying it jarred, which is about 5 cents an ounce, which is great. But you will find that certain other things, if I can find my page of pears, for example, um, actually cost me 22 cents more to make them homemade than it would be to just buy a jar of Earth's Best organic pears. So pears was something, after the first time I made it, I never made it again because it was cheaper to just buy it in the jar. Um, and the whole point, besides wholesome ingredients of making baby food is saving money. So make sure that you are doing so and buying smart. So with that said, with my five tips on making homemade baby food, I'm going to launch into a couple of my favorite recipes and I hope you enjoy them and definitely check out wholesomebabyfood.com to get a lot more information and a lot more recipes and have fun with it. Making baby food is something I really enjoyed. I thought it was super fun. I loved experimenting. Some things my son really loved and I still make for him just as a treat. Um, some things were total disasters and he hated and it became uh, kind of a funny joke. So um, enjoy this and leave me some comments. Thanks. The first baby food recipe I'm going to show you is one that's super basic that most babies start with as their first food, which is peas. Peas are actually really, really easy to make. Um, and I'm just going to use some frozen peas here. These are some organic green peas that I got from the market. Um, and I'm going to cook in my Baby Cook baby food maker. Now you can use any sort of regular vegetable steamer and blender combination or food processor combination. You can even steam in the microwave. If you don't have a steamer, I chose the Baby Cook um, when I started making baby food just because it was convenient for me to have a steamer and a blender uh, food processor all in one. So you consult the book. The Baby Cook says for peas that we need a measure of three for the water. So I've actually already measured out the water to the little line that says three. And I'm going to go ahead and pour it here in the water chamber, which is where the water comes from when it steams your vegetables. I'm going to pour that in. And then I'm going to add um, a little bowl here and snap it onto the base so it's locked in. And then I'm going to add my little steamer tray. And I'm just going to fill this puppy up with some peas. And you don't have to be super exact in your measurements here of your vegetable. I'm just going to dump maybe just fill it about halfway. I found if I fill it too full, then not everything will cook all the way through. So I'm going to fill it about halfway. We'll put our lid back on our water reservoir. And then the last step is locking in this lid here. There we go. And I'm going to turn it to steam. I'm going to let it do its thing. Whenever it's done steaming, it's going to beep and let me know. And it usually takes, um, for something like peas or any vegetable that we have a level three water, it takes maybe about 15 or 20 minutes. So whenever it's done, it will beep and I will come back and show you the next step. Okay, my peas are now finished steaming and I can tell because the light has gone off here on my baby food maker. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn and switch that off. Open it up, be really careful when you're opening it because obviously a lot of steam will come out. 
And the next step is to drain the water off of your peas. And they give you this neat little handle. It actually goes, fits right inside here so you can lift this, strain the water off. And then what you want to do, I'm going to set that aside, is you want to reserve some of this cooking water that's left in here because you'll use that to thin out, take this off, thin out your puree depending on how thin you want it. So what I do is I just get a little measuring cup like this one and pour that water in. I'll come back to that water in a minute here. So I'll snap this back on like so. And then I'm going to pour my cooked peas, my steamed peas, back inside. Now again, this is a step once you have these steamed. If you don't have a nifty little baby food maker like this, you can just use a regular food processor for something like this. Um, and then I'm going to put the lid on just so they don't spray all over the place. Put it upside down. Set that lid right on like that. Now my lid goes back on here. It's locked back in. And now I'm going to start to blend. And just like with any food processor, you want to do a quick little... Okay. Now it clearly needs a little bit more liquid because as you can see, it's really thick with pasty peas. So I'm going to pour in about half of that cooking liquid. Now I don't want my peas to be super smooth because my son is a little bit older now and he likes his food a little chunkier, but if you've got a little one, um, you can use all of the cooking liquid and just keep pulsing it. One tip I will give you is you're never going to get your homemade baby food as smooth as the jarred baby food. You just don't have the big heavy duty machinery that they have in the baby food factories. So don't be discouraged if your baby food is still a little bit chunky. That's perfectly normal. You won't be able to get it that perfectly smooth. See, but you see here adding the water. Really helps. Okay, let's take a look now and see how we're doing. Here it is a much nicer smooth consistency. Now I'm going to leave it like this for mine a little chunkier because again my son's kind of a toddler and likes his food a little chunkier um, but if you like and you have a little one who's maybe trying food for the first time you can keep adding more of this cooking water um, until it's nice and thin. So I'm going to spoon this out into my ice cube tray and I will come back and show you what that looks like. And here are my peas all spooned out into my ice cube tray. And this is actually an OXO brand baby food ice cube trays. These are BPA free um, and they are perfectly sized for two ounces of food. So um, I use a little tablespoon just to spoon everything in here so it stays kind of neat. Now the most important thing when you're making baby food and you spoon it into a tray like this if you're going to freeze it um, is to make sure it cools to room temperature before you put it in the freezer. Otherwise, it's going to grow some bacteria. It's not going to be safe for baby to eat. So I like to just leave mine out on the countertop in the ice cube tray until it's ready to go in the freezer. So the next baby food recipe I'm going to show you is actually one that's my favorite and my son's favorite, and it is roasted bananas and blueberries. And this is a great recipe that I got from this book called Start Fresh. This is a Tyler Florence cookbook, and this is all um, baby food recipes and toddler food recipes. There's some really great ideas in there, and so that's where I got this recipe. And the recipe actually calls for three bananas and a full pint of blueberries. Now, I don't have three bananas in the house. I just have two bananas that happen to be a little brown, so those are the ones I'm using. Um, and I have a bit of blueberries that are left over, so I'm just going to use those as well. My son sees the blueberries and wants one. Here you go, buddy. Yum. Okay, so what we do is we throw these into a baking pan. Make sure you use one with a lid, um, a lip around it. Otherwise, you're going to get a little bit of a mess in your oven. A um, couple of bananas, skin on. Make sure there's no stickers on the skin. And blueberries right on the same tray. I like to use one of these silicone mats um, just to prevent it from all sticking to the pan. Um, but you can use whatever you have. Some foil line pan would work just as well. So you're going to throw these in a 350 degree oven and let them roast for about 20 to 25 minutes. And you'll know they're finished and ready to go when the blueberries start to kind of pop 
and the banana skins are going to turn black. And I actually like to flip them over halfway between their cooking because you'll notice that the top of the banana skin will get black and the bottom won't. Um, so I like to flip my bananas over about 10 minutes in. And I will come back and show you what they look like when it's out of the oven. So here are my bananas and blueberries after about 20 minutes in the oven. And you'll see that the blueberries have kind of all burst and got almost like a jelly, liquidy consistency and the banana skins are nice and black. And I like to handle them with tongs just because you'll see, if I touch them, they're super soft and you'll actually see all of this lovely juice running out of them and you want all of that juice and everything um, for this recipe. So what you need to do is get the banana out of its skin and put it into, I'm going to use um, my baby cook, baby food maker here, so you're going to put it, everything into this bowl. And again, the bananas are pretty mushy. So I find sometimes the best thing to do is to put the whole banana into the baby food maker and then just kind of let it plop right out of its skin. Just like that. Set that skin aside. And do the next one. Again, this is a really great way to get rid of bananas that you have that are too ripe and you know you're not going to eat them before they go bad, you can roast them in the oven. It just gives them a really great flavor. I think I lost some of the skin here and here. Let me make sure I've got them all. I don't want to mash up any of the skin. And you'll see the flesh of the banana is now super soft. Kind of mushy, which is a good thing. And now we're going to scrape up all of this lovely blueberry and I like this. again this is why I like using the um, silicone mats because you don't lose any of this yummy juice and I'm actually going to just tip this entire pan so I get all of the banana juice that came out and all of this blueberry juice and again the recipe calls for a lot more blueberries than I use today um, which is fine it'll just be a little less blueberry tasting but it's great when you use the whole pint of blueberries and the whole tray will be filled with all this yummy blueberry goodness. So I'm going to go ahead and pour all of this into my baby food maker here. I think we got it all. Now I'm just going to put the lid on the baby food maker. Lock it in. And we're just going to pulse it till everything mixes together and it will turn this lovely purpley color. I don't know if you can see all the steam coming off of here, but there's this lovely steam and it smells so good. Now I'm going to leave this a little chunky because my son's a little older and he likes his food chunky. You can continue to pulse this um, until it's a little bit of a finer consistency. If you like, he can smell it. He likes his blueberries and bananas. And then I'm going to go ahead and pour it into my ice cube trays right here. And I like to use a tablespoon um, to pour it into the ice cube trays just because it's a little less messy. I'm going to fill all of my trays here and we'll come back whenever all of my trays are full. And here are my finished trays of bananas and blueberries. I've spooned them all out into my ice cube trays. I've let them cool on the counter for about 30 minutes or so, so they're no longer warm to the touch. Um, so they're safe for me to now put the lid on and put them in the freezer. So the next step in your process for homemade baby food is to store the food that you've made and frozen in your ice cube trays. And I like to use these um, Ziploc, these are heavy duty freezer bags because they have this nice little area that you can write on. So you want to write whatever it is you've made. So in this case, it's blueberry, banana, and peas with the date. Now, homemade baby food that is frozen in cubes in the freezer will last for about a month. So make sure you're not making too much in advance that you're not going to get through before, um, before you have to throw it away. So um, let's open up our tray. Now, these have been in the freezer for about a day or so. Um, if you're really anxious, it really only takes a few hours. But I let these in there for a few days. Um, so there are my peas. And you'll notice um, some vegetables more than others and some fruits will get a lot of accumulation of water crystals on the top. And it's not 
freezer burn. Even though it kind of looks like freezer burn, it's just the moisture from the fruit of the vegetable coming to the surface, and that's perfectly fine. So there's my peas. And I'm going to crack them just like I would crack any ice cube tray. So I'm going to kind of twist the tray. Let me get my camera here to see this twisting action. Balance it here. There's my tray. I'm just going to give it a twist to loosen it. And then I'm going to pour it right into my freezer bag. So I will come back when I've got all of my bags finished. So here we are. I have my peas already in the bag and I've just put all of my cubes of my banana blueberry. And what I like to do is roll the bag over just to get all of the air out of the bag. And it takes up a lot less space in the freezer this way. Get all of the air out and then I'm going to seal the bag. And then I'll put these in the freezer nice and labeled. And then the quick way to thaw them when you're ready to use them um, is to just pop the cubes into a little bowl. So I am going to show you this with the banana blueberry. I have two cubes. That's usually about the serving size I would give my son. Um, and it's great because you can give them a lot of variety. You can do three or four cubes of different flavors and get them lots of different tastes. So this is two cubes here in a bowl. I'm going to pop this in the microwave for about 30 seconds. And I will show you what it looks like in 30 seconds. Okay, and here are my bananas and blueberries. Um, I cooked them in the microwave for about 30 seconds, gave them a stir, and then put them in just for a few more seconds. And you'll see here they are beautifully defrosted um, and ready for my son to eat. And they're actually a little piping hot, so I'll probably let these cool a little bit before I give them to him. But it just shows you how fast you can go from a freezer cube to warm, ready-to-eat baby food. It's less than a minute in the microwave, and it's super convenient.